Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Atherton Blue Box Pennsylvania F7 I picked up a couple months ago. Found this engine on Facebook Marketplace, and as of recently, I've actually given it away. But just before I ship out any giveaway locomotives, I like to make sure they're in working order. And this one, unfortunately, is not so. It has a working headlight, and you can hear the motor humming, but it won't run. So something inside this drive is causing it to completely seize up. So I figured today we'll tear it apart and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. This is not a very common problem. These blue box engines are generally very reliable, so it's kind of strange. Anyways, I'll take it over to the track and I'll show you all what it's doing just for the sake of it. And then we'll tear this thing apart and see if we can figure out why exactly it won't run. So this is currently what the deal is. If we get it set up and give it some power, you can hear the motor's humming and the light is shining. So it's definitely getting power but in both directions it's completely seized and uh, we've got high current draw and I'm not gonna do this for very long because if we continue to do that, we're gonna end up burning out the motor. But yeah, it's really mysterious. It's completely locked up. So let's bring it back over to the bench and see if we can figure out what's up. I do have some confidence we are gonna be able to get this engine going again. These old blue boxes, as I've said a million times, are very tough locomotives. I'm more curious just to find out why it's seized. Anyways, uh, this model right here is one of their super drives. After years ago, marketed these things as basically having amazing pulling capacity, which they did. Um, but they said the super drive was stronger. Really, they just added some weight to their existing drive. Same motor, same gears, so on and so forth. But it would probably improve pulling capacity by at least a few cars. Anyways, here we are inside. And um, yeah, that is quite locked up. I actually did get it to move a little bit manually. Yeah, it's starting to kind of move, but it's it's very stiff, so there's definitely something going on in the gearbox. So we'll break it down and we'll see if we can figure out what exactly that is. Well, I think that this might be the exact same problem that those New York City subway cars I worked on recently were having, which is where these bearings on the end here have locked up. Let me see if I can get this other one here. Oh, yeah, that... Oh, I can I can hardly turn that one manually. Wow. It's funny, I thought that that was maybe more of a Proto 2000 issue, but I guess it's happened on this Athern Blue Box. This is the first time I've seen one on one of these. Let's check to make sure the motor is okay. It seems to be turning fine, and this engine definitely did have some use at some point, and you can see that because there's wear on the commutator. So, yeah, that's kind of a first. Let's check out the gearboxes. It's turning... It's turning pretty much effortlessly, so that's what we want to see there. That one's good too. So yeah, it really is just an issue with the worm gears. Very strange. I suppose it's not impossible that, you know, maybe at some point this engine was involved in a flood, but at the same time it's kind of hard to believe because the motor, it's turning fine and that all has metal components as well, so I wonder if there was a bit of a manufacturing problem with these this is the first time I've seen one on an Atherin, though. Yeah, that is pretty bad right there. You know, another thing that is a little bit strange is that all these parts would be coated in oil. So, you know, it's not inconceivable that moisture could get in here and cause some trouble, but I'm kind of wondering if maybe they actually used some dissimilar metals in here, and maybe that's why these things were having some oxidation issues. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think caused this, because uh, this is a little bit strange. I'll just try to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to remove all the crud off here. I don't know if this is actually going to work that well, but we'll try it. And it's like the grease is just completely congealed. All right, well, that's turning about a million times better. Let's try rebuilding this other one now. Yeah, it's all good. So 
I think at this point we fixed the problem, but while we're in here, we may as well service everything else. So I'm gonna clean up the motor. We'll oil both the bearings. I'll open these things up too, just to check in on everything. As we saw earlier, they are turning correctly, but I just wanna make sure there isn't any hair wound around any of the gears or something like that. All right, well, I'm confident that that motor is now okay. Let's have a go at the trucks. Well, everything looks to be okay here. That's what I wanted to see. Oh, not so. Well, this is why you need to check. So it's hard to see, but there's a little bit of that congealed grease. So you can see when I try to turn it all the way, it locks up right around there. It will make it through, but you would see that in the locomotive's performance. All right, that right there is what I want to see it. It's able to rotate all the way around without any issues. So I guess we'll put this one all back together. And we'll have a look at the other one, because if there's a problem on this truck, there's probably an issue on the other. Hmm. This one doesn't seem to have the issue. I guess none of the grease got into the teeth of these gears. Well, since everything seems okay, I guess we'll uh, put this one back together as well. Throw some nice fresh LaBelle grease in there. Uh, I think this thing is going to be back in business in no time. All right, let's go take this thing over to the track and see if it runs now. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling pretty good that this one's gonna start just because it's an Athern. <laughs> All right, what did I do wrong? So I guess I didn't clip that perfectly and it just kind of walked back out. So if we get that back into place, I think it's gonna start this time. Something's still not right there. Just given how much the motor was wobbling around and the fact that it didn't pick up power in time leads me to believe that maybe the motor mounts are a bit loose. Oh. Okay, we've got a broken one. That makes a lot of sense. Two broken ones. Well, that's unfortunate. So this is something that unfortunately happens from time to time with these old atherns, which is that these mounts break. It's a very common issue if these things ever get dropped. These just become very brittle over time. I suspect these were probably somewhat soft in the beginning just uh, to, you know, help dampen the vibrations off the motor. But uh, yeah, as you can see, these ones have gone completely bad. I've managed to fix these things before just by planting them in place and putting a bit of hot glue down because really what's important here is that the motor is obviously secure but also that these contacts uh, are touching this plate right here which when these break they're not. So you can do that but 
since this is something I'm actually going to be giving to somebody, I'd rather actually do a decent job at putting it together. So I think we'll try to fix this one. Might be able to get away with reusing that one, but we'll see what we have. Uh, I was sent a whole bunch of different Atherin parts a while back. Although that would be a little bit of an unusual one to salvage since they're usually broken. So yeah, I remembered throwing this Atherin chassis in there a while back, but we can see the motor mounts on this one are also completely gone, so... That's not going to be of much use to us. Oh! Once again, saved by the almighty parts bin. So, I only have the one, but I think this is going to do, I mean, at least at this point, we're going to have three out of four, plus this one is kind of pliable, so I think it's going to be fine. Anyways, it looks like there's actually some flashing left over from the factory, thanks, Atherin. Now, to get this thing back into place, we're going to have to be careful not to break the original clip, so I think what I'm going to do is maybe try to kind of go in at a bit of an angle here. I'll remove these make things as easy on ourselves as possible. It's looking pretty good there, Scoob. All right, let's see if this thing will run for real this time. Yeah, that's more like it. That yeah, seems pretty good. All right, let's get the shell and weight back in this. All right, I got the weight and shell back on, and while I was at it, I decided just to throw a Katie coupler on there, so that should work well, so that we can actually properly test this thing with some cars. So let's get it all set up on the track. We'll swap places with the AC44i and uh, haul some cargo around.
Well, I've now been running this thing for about 10 minutes straight and it's been nothing but flawless. It's just been going around like a top. It hasn't derailed, it hasn't hiccuped once. Uh, the headlight flickers a little bit, but other than that, everything's good. The current draw is in check. So as far as I'm concerned, this thing is ready to be shipped out. It's pretty remarkable. You know, these Atherton engines are just so tough. Probably just seized up because it's been sitting for many years and you know with a little bit of cleaning and a new motor mount Just a couple small adjustments and it's back online and it probably will be for many years knowing how tough these things are Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the repair and with that. I just want to thank you all so much for watching